now we are actually going to go and identify mosquitoes from this other site. So it says, next step, larva identification advanced. Once again, this is not something you have to do, but if you're interested and you think it's fun, it is really important. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Why? We just looked at a mosquito up close and personal, and we are ready to identify. And so you've seen all those specimen features up close, and now it's our turn to go through and uh, put this data into the GLOBE database. So I'm in the app, and I'm in, I've already described the, um, the habitat, and now I'm gonna record this mosquito for posterity. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, photograph the larva, and I did that. And so now I'm going to uh, go through the key. Okay, the first thing we need to do is verify the mosquito larva. And you saw a mosquito with the mouth parts and the antenna. You saw the head separated from the thorax. You saw the abdominal segments. And then we looked very carefully at those terminal segments to determine whether or not we had um, one of the medical medically important taxa. And I'll just give you a spoiler. This picture here has a long, thin siphon, what we call a cylindrical siphon. And this is typical of what we expect to see for Culex, although Culex can also have short blunt siphons as well. But this is a typical Culex. So you can't kind of miss it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, walk through the key. And so we're going to say, yes, this is a mosquito larva. So I'm going to click on that. And now we're going to look at the siphon, which is the air tube. And we've looked at that in great detail. And so we, we've already looked at the siphon. We know that it has a siphon present. So we're going to collect that. Uh, you are asked to take a close-up photo of the abdomen if you can. And I did that. So I'm going to say I'm done taking photos. And now we're going to look at the siphon shape. And it says here the mosquito sif larva siphon can take different shapes. Some are very sharp and pointed. Some are cylindrical, like the one we just saw in the app. And some are what they call spindle shaped. And I think a better word for that is probably sort of blunt and short. Uh, but you can look at the siphon that we had and determine one of these. And so um, in the app, you can actually, if you can't remember, here's some pictures. That's a pointed one modified for piercing tissue. Uh, there is a close up of it. Here's the cylindrical siphon that you might expect to see with, um, with Culex. And here's a close up. And there is a, um, what they call a spindle shaped or the blunt siphon. And that's what we saw in the specimen that we looked at close up. So looking at this picture, um, I'm gonna say yes, that is either cylindrical or spindle shaped. And now we're gonna look at the pectin. And so this picture shows you what the pectin looks like, where you can find it. Uh, in the app, it shows you here, uh, it just, this picture here just shows you, hey, those are, those are hairs, not pectin, because pectin is regular and short, and hairs can be typically irregular, and they can be found all over the place. Okay. Um, so here's an example of pectin like we saw when we were doing the live micro microscopy. Uh, here's another picture of a uh, pectin uh, where like I said, you know, here it's a little bit harder to see. That's what we were seeing in the first few. Uh, you can kind of see that it's a little bit different lighting. You can kind of see some dots. Um, that's also another way you can see pectin. It really just depends, and here's some more pectin. It just really depends on what the view is. This is a three-dimensional thing, and we're looking at it two, uh, you know, in 2D. So it's going to look di differently, and it takes you know, a, a quite a bit of skill to um, immediately see that. Okay, and there's the pectin again. So I'm going to say, yes, I see pectin. Okay, the next thing is to describe the hairs. And what we saw is, do we have multiple tufts? We did see uh, a single hair or no hair. So single tuft, single hair or no hair, or multiple hairs or tufts. Now we're gonna look at the saddle. And the saddle is um, the part that is wrapped around the anal segment. You can see maybe in this picture a little bit better what they mean when they talk about a saddle. It looks a little bit like a horse saddle. Here's a couple pictures of what you can see in the app. This is kind of what we saw um, looking at our specimen, where the saddle is partially encir uh, encircling the anal segment. Okay, so yes, we have a saddle that partially encircles the anal segment. Okay, then we're going to look at the cone scales. 
and we saw those, they were very beautiful in our specimen. Um, and uh, here's a picture. That's pretty much what ours look like. And it says, okay, do you see a dark plate with teeth? That's not what we see. We do see comb scales. So we're gonna choose that. And it says, wow, it looks like we have 80s. And so we can, we, we can look and see we have a spindle-shaped siphon, you have a single tuft or just one or two hairs, you have pectin present, you have an anal brush, which is below the saddle, and that is what we have. And so we can say, yep, that is definitely an 80s. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to see whether or not there was a tuft of hair in the pectin. And you may not remember this, but we did not see a, a tuft of hair in the pectin. We saw a, a series of seven or five or seven um, little spines that are part of the pectin and there were no hairs in it. So we're gonna say, no, there is no tuft inserted, inserted in the pectin. And then now here is a, uh, the, the close up of the comb scales. Now we saw those comb scales and we looked at them and we were pretty sure that they came to a point. So we're gonna say they are tapered to a single point. And so that gets us to a identification of 80s albopictus. So what we saw were comb scales that were kind of shaped to a point. They didn't, they weren't pitchfork shaped with like one big point and two short ones in the edge. We had the saddle that went, went partially around. We have the anal brush that came out, but it was underneath the saddle, not piercing the saddle. And we saw um, at least one uh, tuft of hairs. And so, yes, this is 80s albopictus. Now, just to be sure, we have another test we can do. Um, let me see. So if you can uh, go back here and it says, if you couldn't, if, if your microscope can't really resolve whether what exactly the shape of the scale, the comb scales are, we have another test we can look at. And I already pointed out that to you. So we're gonna go, uh, we can't tell, let's try the alternate test. And it says, look at the thorax. Are there like little hooks at the very base of all those little hairs that we saw on the, abdom on the abdominal segments? And what you'll see here is here's an example of some of the little black hooks that we would see. It's just basically what you would see is it looks like the, um, the hair is not coming directly out, but it's actually a little bit of a black color at the bottom. So here's some pictures that you can see. And I would say that um, we didn't see those hooks. We saw the hairs, we saw three hairs just emerging without a hook right outside the side of the body. So that would allow us then to say, no, there are no hooks. That takes us to the same place in the key 80s Elopictus. Your photos of the habitats and your mosquito photos. So thanks very much for listening.